Hello everyone! To those who requested this video, here it is. Let's take a look at what's inside the 4th edition of the food exchange list for meal planning. We will start first with the calculation. As you can see, the steps in calculating and planning the diet is still here which starts at the determination of the desirable body weight. This is also the reference I used for the video How to Calculate Ideal Body Weight which includes the calculation of desirable body weight using Tannhauser method, using Hamby formula, and then the last one which is the calculation of ideal body weight using body mass index. One change that I noticed while scanning the latest food exchange list is the value used in the calculation of ideal body weight using body mass index and in previous references the value used in the calculation of ideal body weight for males is multiplied by 22 and for the females the value used is 20.8 or 21 but in this latest edition the value used in the calculation is 22 for both the males and the females. Next is the macronutrient composition of the food exchange list. Now our food exchange list includes the seven food groups, the vegetables, fruit, milk, rice, meat, fat, and the sugar. So for the vegetable group, in the previous edition, there are two groups of vegetables, which is the vegetable A and the vegetable B. But in this edition, there is only one group of vegetables, so no more vegetable A and no more vegetable B. For the fruit, still remains the same, and the milk, uh, the classification is still the same. Whole milk, low-fat, non-fat skim milk, or fat-free milk. Now, one of the major changes in the fourth edition of food exchange list is the grouping of rice. Because in the previous edition, there is only one group of rice. But now, the rice group is divided into three, which is rice A, rice B, and rice C in accordance to their protein content. So you have low protein, medium protein, and high protein rice. And then the next one, you have the meat exchange, which is still the same. Still classified into low fat, medium fat, high fat meat. And then you still have the fat exchange, and then lastly, the sugar exchange. Alright, let's take a look at what inside our food exchanges. Now for the vegetable group, as mentioned earlier, in the previous edition, there are two groups of vegetables, but now there's only one group of vegetables. Only vegetables that contain 16 calories per exchange were included in the vegetable exchange list. And meanwhile, Vegetables with energy values of below 16 calories per exchange are found in a separate table. And vegetable garnishes like the coriander and leek are no longer included in the vegetable exchange list. So this is the vegetable exchange list. The list of fresh and processed vegetables below contain 3 grams of carbohydrates and 1 gram of protein and 16 calories per exchange. So as you notice also here, the food exchange list also included now the Filipino name or the common name of the food and also their English name. So that is also one of the major addition of the 4th edition of the food exchange list. And then you have the fruit exchanges. So for the fruit exchange, it includes fresh and processed fruits like canned, dried, or fresh fruit juices. And also coconut water is also considered as a fruit juice. That you can see, you can see that one here. So these are the examples of the selected fruit exchanges. Next is for the milk exchange, it's still the same, you still have the whole milk, the low-fat milk, 
and the non-fat skim milk or fat-free milk but with the addition now of yogurt. So these are the examples of your milk groups. And then now again for the rice exchange, they are divided into three groups now which is rice A, rice B, and rice C. Our boiled white rice and boiled brown rice belongs to the medium protein group which is our rice B. Alright, so these are examples of selected rice exchanges. For the meat exchanges, it's still the same. It is still classified as low-fat meat, medium-fat meat, and high-fat meat. Each exchange of meat on this list contains about 8 grams of protein. The amount of fat and calories will depend on the amount of fat in the meat. And one exchange of meat when fried will absorb approximately one exchange of fat. So you still have to consider this one in meal planning also because every time that you include fried meat in your meal planning, the fat should also be included. Alright, so these are examples of selected meat exchanges. Now for the fat exchange, it's still the same. 5 grams of fat will give you 45 kilocalories. These are examples of the selected fat exchanges. And for the sugar exchanges, it's still the same. Every 5 grams of sugar will give you 20 kilocalories. And then this is the selected sugar exchanges. There are other foods and beverages not available in the seven major food exchanges and they can be found in the appendices. Like for example, here we have our appendix A which is your beverage list. So the list gives the sugar equivalent of some commonly consumed beverages in amounts per single serve containers. Then you also have the selected food list. So these food items cannot be classified into any of the seven major exchange lists because the macronutrient content do not fit into the criteria set for each food group. So they may contain a combination of macronutrients that could be translated into two or more classification of exchanges. So these are examples of your food items that cannot be classified into the seven major exchanges. Now for the appendix C, these are what we call the free foods. When we say free foods, these are food or drinks that contain few calories, about below 16 kilocalories per serving, and they may be used freely in the meal planning unless specifically prohibited. And you also have your alcoholic beverages. So for the alcoholic beverage, they will provide approximately 7 calories per gram when they are metabolized. And now you have here the Appendix H, which is the calculated diet for quick reference. This is based on a 65, 15, 20 distribution respectively. Like for example, if you have a patient which needs 1,500 calories and you will be using the 65, 15, 20 distribution. You no longer have to calculate the meal plan because this one is already ready-made. You just take a look at this reference. But you cannot use this reference if you will be using other distribution like 60, 20, 20 or 55, 20, 25. So oftentimes, Students particularly are confused of the allowances for the diet prescription. So I redirect them to this page in the Appendix H so that they can see that the diet prescription considers only plus or minus 5 for the macronutrients and plus or minus 50 for the calories. I took a photo of the pages of the food exchange list. This is to help those who still doesn't have a copy of the latest food exchange list especially the students who are using this for their online activities 
You can send me a request through my email, cookingcalories at gmail.com. Alright, so that would be all. Thank you so much for listening.